Hi, and welcome to Element 7 Concrete Artisan Training 4218 Budgeting Material. This is part one of two, Calculating Area. We're going to discuss why we are bothering to learn this, how we do it in general, and what to do specifically. You must learn this to get smarter and create more value. You're going to see the world in trapezoid and learn the general concepts, and then you're going to learn how to do it specifically on each job. Let's dig into why learn this. Some material will fail if installed too thickly. Moisture cured urethanes, for instance, can have as little as 5% between too thin and too thick. Nobody can cowboy measure 5%, so you've got to learn how to budget in order to install that in a way that it doesn't fail. A kit of FloraWare 7100, for instance, costs a team $1,600, and you have to drive down there and put in a lot of work. If you don't know the math, you can't cowboy measure this and it will fail. Other materials will fail if installed too thinly. If you roll 100% solids epoxy like you roll CSS all week long, you will put it down at about half the thickness needed for it to perform as intended. You may come up short if you use more than planned for. So for instance, if we're doing a urethane mortar job, the market is not going to bear us ordering more than 20% than we need to use. That stuff is like $7 a square foot if we're using the heavy duty at 3 eighths of an inch. And so, you know, if we're spending 9 or $10 in material costs, nobody can sell that job for enough money to, to cover you not knowing how to do the math. And then personally, you got to know that creating more value in the world is a mental game. A strong back and hands is worth about $12 an hour. A strong mind can be worth much more. So if you want to do well for your family, your team, and yourself, you got to put in the work and get smarter. There is no way to smarter than to humble yourself and actually do the work. Again, the market won't pay for a fool who can't budget. Budgeting is telling money, time, or material where to go. It is not wondering where it went. In fact, if you don't budget, you'll wonder where stuff went other than telling, rather than telling it where to go. you got to learn this. You got to know that the strongest thing in you, the strongest motivation in the human psyche is the desire to act consistently with who you are. And I'm taking a little minute here to remind you that you're not a fool. We don't hire fools. You're not a monkey. You're not a robot. You're a human being. And the market won't pay for a fool who can't budget. So again, if you want to do well for your family, you got to put in the work and learn how to do this stuff. All right, how to do this in general. First, we're going to learn how to calculate area forwards and backwards. Literally, we're going to learn how to calculate it forwards and then work backwards to get a different result in the second module. You're going to get to where you can easily calculate the area of anything. The key to that is understanding that everything is made of trapezoids. And then in the next module especially, you're going to be taught the most basic algebra possible to figure out the dimension you need from the dimension you have in the area that's given on the data sheet. So you can kind of see here, area equals length times average width implies that length equals area divided by average width. Don't worry about that number three too much now. In this part one, we're going to focus on just learning how to calculate area forwards and backwards. Okay, so the big idea is that everything is made of trapezoids. What is a trapezoid? Well, here's a picture, and you'll see that B1 is parallel to B2, or said here, B2 sub is parallel to B1. sub the height is perpendicular to the basis. Now the sides, those can be anything. We don't care about the, the measure of those, we care about the height and the base. So the area under a weird curve can be approximated with trapezoids. The more thin trapezoids one makes, the closer to perfect calculation you get. So if you can imagine this curve right here with just one trapezoid instead of three, it would be less accurate. If you can imagine it with six instead of three, you can see how those little white spaces between the trapezoids and the curve would be filled in better. Again, area is the average of the bases, or base 2 plus base 1 divided by 2 times the height. H is perpendicular to the bases. Area is not that, the average of the sides times the height. It's the average of the bases times the height. Okay, well, so we'll show you kind of how to use this in real life. You take a weird shape like Virginia, and by breaking it into five trapezoids, you could get pretty close to the actual area. Now imagine if you broke it up into two trapezoids. It wouldn't be as good, right? Can you kind of imagine that thing just kind of split in half and what that might look like, like where you'd split it? 
But if you broke it into 10 trapezoids, you can imagine it being much closer, right? So the, I want you to kind of walk through that mentally so when you get on a driveway, you can make a reasonable guess at how many trapezoids you ought to break it up into to be accurate enough to be diligent and feel good about your work, but still reasonable. Craftsmanship counts for everything. Craftsmanship. Craftsmanship is the high quality assembly or creation of an object. A craftsman is a person highly skilled in a particular craft. When they use that skill to produce a high quality object. you got to remember that it counts also in your paperwork. So when you're uh, measuring things, you measure to the inch. It's not that hard, and I can show you how to gear down from inches. But you want to write your measurements in rows, and then you want to keep your subtotals, those are the little things behind the square foot sign on the right there, in neat columns. And then double check the sums of your subtotals. So here you can see that I added it up to 4,002 square feet. I added it up to 4,002 again. Realize that if we get a rough number and then we actually count it, and if, our, if the reality is bigger than what the bid was, we can get a change order, and that might be several hundreds of dollars. We don't want to leave money on the table. On the flip side, if the concrete guy exaggerates to the owner and we bid it correctly and it comes out, that integrity is going to show and it's going to pay off. So kind of a real life example here. Here's a site plan and the five steps are always going to be number one, break it into trapezoids. Number two, measure the area, which is again, the average of the basis times the height. We're going to write the measurements in as neatly as we can. You're going to sum all the areas and then double check your sum. So you can see here how we broke it up into the trapezoids. On this next slide, you'll see how we uh, measured the area. And then as far as like doing the math, I kind of did it where you'd have it in real life. You know, normally you're going to have a piece of paper and an actual driveway. Um, in the field, you're not going to have a site plan to mark up because in the field, the flat work won't match the site plan anyhow. I'm using words you might not know there. Flat work is concrete that is poured almost directly on the grade. So driveways, sidewalks. Um, patios a lot of times are called flat work. The other thing that you might deal with is what's called structural concrete. Flat work doesn't have beams. Beams are big wide sections of concrete that go down into the earth. Um, flat work in this part of the country, in this market right now, is around five bucks a square foot. Uh, structural concrete can be four times that. Anyways, little side note there. Um, I would recommend keeping a notebook with all the papers that you don't want thrown away in a couple of days. So like a project worksheet is almost disposable, but life lessons, measurements, quotes, one-liners, all those things are best put in some kind of a notebook. I like using the quad ruled composition books. Again, that's kind of a little side note thing, but this is where that math was done. And that driveway in the picture would have been 1,883 square feet. Okay, so that's it for the video. Um, but here's how you're actually going to get great at this. Number one, you got to do the work. You got to make practice problems for yourself and maybe even get a study buddy. I personally do better by myself, but some people work better in groups. But you got to do the work. Being quote unquote bad at math is like being bad at running marathons. It takes a lot of hard work over time to be good at running marathons. There's no shortcut to that ability other than filling up the work. The only difference between me and some people is I went to a community college where there wasn't a lot of smart people and I filled notebook after notebook after notebook with practice problems until I was ready to go to the UNLV. And again with the marathon analogy, it doesn't matter how smart you are naturally, it's about how much work you put in. Like I might never run half as fast as a guy from Kenya, I'm 5'10", 41 years old, you know, lifted a lot of weight, it's just not built like a runner necessarily. But I can only even run a marathon if I grind for 10 or 20 hours a week for several months. And you can only get great at this if you grind for 10 hours a week for several months. That means an hour or two a day at least that you're doing practice problems and really getting good. Now this is just counting, calculating area. This is probably 5th or 6th grade math. So you're going to get good at this pretty quick. We're not doing high finance here. Again, you might never be Albert Einstein but you can get better than 99% of the world with the work. So now is the time to put the phone down, pick the notepad up, and put in the work. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.